Today's episode is all about the DP4400E. This is the DP4400E, not the DP4401E, which has GPS. Nevertheless, we're going to program this radio today, back to back, that means radio to radio without a repeater, and what we're going to do at the very end is we're going to save down the code plug and then you'll be able to download it and save yourselves a little bit of time. So, first of all, I want to explain that this is going to be quite a long video. Because programming one of these radios doesn't take five minutes, it takes about 20 minutes. So, what I'll try and do is I'll try and put the timeline in the video description so that you can flick, flick along the video, jump around the video, as you see fit, to the bit that actually matters to you. Programming a DP series radio, or a motor turbo radio, is more widely known, is relatively straightforward, but not always completely straightforward. As you can see, this radio has been supplied by Radiotronics. I'm the lead engineer at Radiotronics. My name's Tech. Yep, that's my real name, Tech. Or at least that's what everybody calls me. And if you'd like any further information about programming your radios, you can always contact me at tech, that's T-E-C-H, at radiotronics.co.uk. Now let's move on to the juicy bits and actually program this radio. So we're just starting the motor turbo software, as you can see. And that's it, it's started. Right, now what we're going to do is I'll just put a window in window here so you can see what I'm doing with this radio. And when I plug this in, You'll be able to see everything that's going on, so you can copy what I'm doing to program your DP4400E. Now, just a few words about the DP4400E. This radio is by far the best-selling two-way radio in the world right now. There are many variations of it. For example, in the United States, it may be called an XPR something. Um, in certain parts of the world, it may be called an XIR. But nevertheless, it's all the same radio. It is a UHF motor turbo, non-display, non-GPS radio. So if you're watching this from anywhere else in the world, wherever you are, the chances are is that this tutorial will work for you. Back to the software. So first things first, let's connect our radio. And I'll just put a window in window so you can see exactly what I'm doing. As you can see here, I'm going to remove this cover. In fact, I'll just show you that. As a, I'll just zoom into that. So we unscrew that and we remove this cover, as you can see. We'll put that to one side. And then we'll plug in our cable. Now this cable, I'd like to just say, if you haven't already seen it, check out one of our earlier videos where we explain this cable. And this cable is actually not Motorola's cable. This is a cable that Radiotronics has had developed, which is a aftermarket alternative to the Motorola cable. Nevertheless, it works very, very well, as I'm sure you've seen uh, in our in our earlier video. And by the way, if you haven't seen that video, go and take a look. Search our YouTube channels, click subscribe, and have a look at the, the video that we did on an introduction to this particular cable, and you'll see um, how, how well it works. So I'll connect that to our radio, and as you can see, uh, you'll notice that this particular cable has a little latch here and we slot that into place just here like that and then we push downwards it's important that we don't press any of these buttons but we hold the radio there just above the top button and we push this down like that as you can see it clicked into place and then we just twist this retaining screw that's it that's now connected as you can see now i've already got this connected to the computer here so this end is now connected to the radio and the other end is connected to the computer. So let's go back to the computer and have a quick look. Now, I'm using a virtual machine here, which means that I actually have to tell the computer that I've connected this radio to the computer. So give me a second while I just turn the radio on. And again, we'll have a picture in picture so you can see me do that. I'll just turn the radio on. And we'll just wait for a second. Brilliant. As you can hear, that just connected. So bear with me a second. I'm just, you'll see my mouse moving around, but you can't actually see what's happening. Okay, there we go. Okay, 
So you should now see, let's just have a quick look. What we're going to do now, we're going to very quickly look in the device manager and make sure that we have a network device called a network adapter called Motor Turbo, which we do not. So bear with me a second. Uh, by the way, this is a live video, so unfortunately I can't pause it and jump ahead. So you'll just have to bear with me a second. Oh, there it is. Look, just noticed actually it is there. And just to make 100% sure, we'll just turn the radio off. And then we'll just turn it back on. There you go, it disappeared. And then we'll just turn it back on. And you'll hear it again. You'll hear the radio boot up. Channel 1. Fantastic. And then I'll just tell the virtual machine that it's present. There we go. And you'll see it appear somewhere here. Just a second. There we go. That's wonderful. That's exactly what we're looking for. We'll minimize that because we might need that later, so we'll keep it there for now. But most importantly, the first thing we'll do is we'll click read. That will take a second or two. This 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 radio doesn't have a display. Uh, we have a password on our radios and our demonstration fleet, which is what this is part of. So I'll just type that in, and that will now read the radio. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. Okay, there we go. So the first thing that we'll notice is we'll have a little look down here. This is, as, as you can see here, this is called the device information field. So, as we can see, the frequency range of this radio is between 403 to 527 megahertz. This section talks about the device features. As you can see, it's a digital radio. It's got all these little fe all these features already switched on. Good. Okay, good. So, what we're going to do today is the first thing we're going to do is we are going to start a code plug from scratch. So, first things first, let's just delete all this stuff out of here. So, we'll first of all we'll create one in the radio ID. And then we'll pop down and make sure that we've got nothing in here. We do. So um, let's delete that. Let's put that back to however it would be. Oops. Let's put that back to how it would be in the very first place, which would say call one. Let's put that back to where it should be. Delete that. Call two. So I, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just... Um, I'm just reverting the radio to essentially how you would receive it. So if you receive this particular radio and you read it in for the first time, uh, this actually has a different type of code plugin to what you would have. So I'm just reverting this back to the original. So let me just continue doing that. In fact, yeah, in fact, we've pretty much done it. Uh, there weren't actually a great deal of difference there. So um, we just already programmed this to be a demonstration radio so it kind of had some extra little things in it but actually all it was is it had two two channels um, and I've just reverted that back to how you would expect to receive it so the first things first is I would say to you make sure you're in expert mode and this is really important so very quickly uh, go to view and make sure that you're in expert mode here the next thing you want to go and have a look at is in uh, is in security. So have a quick look in security and make sure that you don't have anything in this table here where it says restricted access to system. And the reason you don't want anything in there is because actually that's called the RAS key, restricted access to system, RAS key. And usually you may have something in there that is assigned to a channel and that will cause you programming issues. So let's just delete that. Ooh, let's try again. Okay, so make sure you delete that. The next thing we want to look at is accessories uh, and make 100% sure that everything down here is unassigned. The next thing we want to look at is the buttons and there's absolutely no reason to have all of these things switched on. So change these to unassigned uh, again, unassigned, that already was, but let's do it again, unassigned and unassigned. 
Okay. Um, now, this section is actually for if you have a remote speaker microphone connected to the radio and you want to control what its optional buttons do. We don't want to do that. So again, unassigned and unassigned. And to do that, you can just literally press on the drop down list, press U, and that will assign to unassigned. Let's do the same over here as well. So that means that now we've got nothing assigned to any of our accessory buttons. Okay, moving on. Um, so now, as you can see, the first thing we did, we've, we've, we've changed this back to unassigned, or which it should have been unassigned. And there's one more thing, which is in general settings. Let's scroll down. Um, <laughs> just ignore this. This won't come up on your computer. This is because I use a virtual machine for all uh, streaming. So let's just check everything here. Uh, mic selection rule default. I mean, what we would generally say is mic follows PTT on this section. So this, just to recap where we are, we're in general settings, microphone and mic se selection rule. And the reason that we select mic follow PTT is that if you have a, um, first of all, if you press the push to talk on the radio, that's this button here. If you press the push to talk on the radio, it will always use this microphone. If you if you have an accessory connected, so let's assume that you have, say, a, a remote speaker microphone. That's also known as a shoulder mic. It's the kind of mic that you run up your back, throw over your shoulder, and it makes it easier to use the radio uh, while it's on your belt. And imagine that you've got it connected to here. This is the accessory port or the audio accessory port to be specific. Um, imagine you've got that remote speaker microphone connected to this port. That will also have a push to talk button on it, much like this one, but maybe a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner. And what that means is, is that um, here it's saying default. Well, let's not assume what the default behavior is because goodness knows what Motorola have decided is today's default behavior. <laughs> I mean, they do actually give you a little bit of information here, which is well worth a read, um, and it's actually quite comprehensive. But nevertheless, the best option is always Mike follows PTT. That means if you press the PTT button on here, it will use this mic, and if you use the PTT button on a remote speaker microphone, it will use the microphone on there and not on this radio, which is very, very important. And then... I, I always like to have the channel free indication tone switched on. That means that the radio will actually give you some sort of indication when the frequency becomes completely clear. It's almost like a Roger bleep, which was a, a kind of at the end of a transmission. But it's actually your radio, this radio, that indicates that the frequency is now clear. And then finally, the talk permit tone. Again, we're in general settings, just to recap. The talk permit tone, I like to have that switched on for both analog and digital. And all that means is, I'll just demonstrate that. So when you press the push to talk button, you'll hear a, a, a noise. Okay, we'll demonstrate that noise later because it's currently in repeater mode and that's not going to work right now. Um, but generally, it's a, it's a, a, a noise that kind of goes doodle and that says it's time to talk or it's safe to speak. In fact, we're just going to jump back to the uh, channels here. Just give me a second. Channels. Yep. We'll just change this channel. So I'll just demonstrate that very quickly. Uh, let's do, let's change this to a UK uh, general channel or a simple UK channel 449.3125. Uh, and then we'll just copy that over to there. And then we'll pop back to where we were which was the general settings as we could say here and now if we were to very very quickly we'll very quickly write this radio as you can see so we'll click right uh, and that's just right into this radio i'll just demonstrate that talk permit tone setting okay so now we'll just demonstrate our talk permit tone setting, which is 
Well, it helps to let the radio boot up. Okay, so when you hear do 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 do, that is the radio booting up. And then the the second tone you heard was actually it it recognises that it's connected by USB. So here's the talk permit tone. That's the thing that we were talking about earlier in general settings. Let's just pop down there again. Uh, and that's here where it says analog and digital. So if you just listen to this tone. That tone means that after you've heard that tone, it's safe to speak. Whereas if you were to speak before that tone ends, the chances are is it will cut off whatever it is that you're saying. Okay, so anyway, that's the talk permit tone. And then for a back-to-back -back radio programming, there's nothing else in. Yep, yeah, there's nothing else in here. Um, that 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 matters. Okay, so moving on. Okay, Mike's turbo no longer working. Moving on. There we go. Right. So the next thing we want to do, and the first thing we want to do, just imagine that we are programming in. Uh, let's say, let's say we're programming in. Um, for three three channels, and and that's the best thing anyway, because actually. On the uh, Simple UK license, the license that you can buy for 75 quid. In fact, shameless plug here. I'm just going to go through that so very, very quickly. Um, here is our website. This is radiotronics.co.uk. This is the company that I work for. And if we have a quick look at uh, OFC uh, S UK. Now, if you type that into our search bar, that means, let me just go through what that means. Ofcom. Uh, that's OFC and then Simple UK. So we sell a license. This this is a like just so you know, this is a licensed radio. If you bought a set of these off eBay or you've bought them off anywhere, you know, secondhand Gumtree, um, free ads, you know, your local I don't know, your local paper or whatever, then uh, you do need a, a license for these. So I'll go through that very quickly. This in, you need a license for this radio in the UK, and you also need the license for this radio in the Republic of Ireland, and also in most European countries. Now, I'm only going to talk about Ofcom, which is the United Kingdom uh, licensing organisation, but nevertheless, um, on our website, OFC S UK will bring you to this page here, which is a search result page, and then that will take you to the Ofcom license page. The reason I'm showing you this is that you can buy this from us at our website for 75 quid and that lasts for a period of five years. And that means that, as you can see, 75 pound, five years, three shared assigned channels. It means that you are completely legal to use this radio on three of those channels, soon to become seven, but we'll cover that in a future video. For now, it's three. And that means that you're fully compliant. And when I, mean, when I say compliant, I don't necessarily mean legal, but what I do mean is you are compliant with the current radio uh, licensing regulations. And it's very important that you are 75 quid versus, a ten, versus potentially a 10,000 pound fine. Sounds like a good deal to me. So let's assume that you are compliant and that you've already bought your license off Ofcom or Radiotronics or whatever, you buy from lots of different companies. But, you know, obviously I work for Radiotronics, which is this company, and that's who I promote. That's Radiotronics, and our website is radiotronics.co.uk. Um, but assuming that you're compliant, you've got your license, let's start how, uh, let's start this. So, the first thing you want to go for is follow this tree all the way down and collapse everything. Like that. Then open up contacts. Then click on digital and then click on the first one, which will always be core one. You can make this anything you want, but it has to be something unique. In fact, let's just make it one. Then let's go to digital and we'll click add and we'll click group call. All right. And then we're going to make that two. And then just for fun, we'll also add the group call and we'll double click on that one and we'll make that three. Now, there will be some people out there who say you can use the same call one, group one, whatever, 
um, for every channel as long as they're on different frequencies and they are absolutely right. In fact, if you believe that, leave a comment below in the video below, please. Um, because Motorola says, and the DMR uh, Foundation and the, the DMR uh, Association, I think they're called now, uh, also says that each individual channel should specify its own DMR group call ID. Now, yes, there is an argument to say that perhaps you could use call one for every channel because they're on different frequencies and you would be right. That would technically work. However, the DMR Association does say that that's bad practice and so therefore we're going to do it the way that they say that we should be doing it and the way that Motorola follow suit. So here we have, we're going to, we're going to create three channels and here we have three digital contacts, call one, call two and call three. Okay, we can now collapse that. All right, so we've got call one, as you can see, with call ID one. We've got call two with call ID two. We've got call three with call ID three. Now, just to be 100% sure and recap, that they are all group calls. As you can see, the reason, the way we can see that is by looking at the icon. You can see it's a little uh, digital type wave symbol. And then you can see there's two people there and that shows that it's a group call. Good. So let's let's collapse that for a second. Now we need to go to RX group lists. We don't need capacity plus and we don't need flexible RX lists for back-to-back -back radio communications. Now, as you will see in call one, you will almost definitely have call. So that's RX digital call one. You will almost definitely have call one already included in there, as you can see. But we're going to create two more. So let's create call uh, list one, list two. Let's just do some renaming and call ours list one. Aha, let's do it backwards. Okay, so to rename, we simply click on it, right click on it and click rename, or we press F2. As you can see, there's an F2 shortcut there. So let's call that list three. Uh, let's go backwards and we will go uh, list two. And then we're going to go right up to the top and click list one. So as you can see, we've we've now got list one, list two, and list three. List one already contains call one. List two doesn't contain anything, so make it contain call two. And list three doesn't contain anything, so make it contain call three. That's it. So we're finished there. So let's just recap. We've got call one, call two, and call three, with ID one, two, and three, respectively. Let's collapse that. We've got digital list one, two, and three, which digital list one has call one, digital list two has call two, and digital list three has call three. And as you can see, list one contains call one, list two contains call two, and list three contains call three. Okay, so let's move on. We are now going to set up our channels. So our channels rely on quite a few different things. Let's just move that down a little bit. Now, you'll notice that uh, we already have 449.3125, but let's have a quick look at the, uh, at the simple UK Ofcom um, frequencies. So let's do a Google search very quickly. Uh, Ofcom simple UK channels. Now, you'll notice that our blog is actually the first result on, on, on most search engines now, including Bing, Google, whatever. So if you have a quick look where it says, and it might be the second one down, but what you're looking for are the words Ofcom Simple UK, not Ofcom Simple Site. For the purposes of this demonstration, we are going to be Ofcom looking for Ofcom Simple UK which is on this particular page, look, blog.radiotronics.co.uk, Ofcom Simple UK, it's four new, new UHF channels. Again, another plug for Radiotronics here. Um, I contribute a lot to this blog. Uh, my name's Tech. I'm the technical lead here at Radiotronics. And this blog, um, we keep up to date all the time. It has a wealth of information on it, including a blog post that I recently posted, which is all about programming the TKR D710, um, which is the new DMR Kenwood repeater or new-ish DMR Kenwood repeater. 
There's some information there, just, just if you want to have a little read up on that again. And also, have a look at the blog, and you can subscribe to the blog as well. There's a, a place to enter your email address, wherever that is, but I'm sure you'll find it. So, very interesting stuff. The article we're interested in today is, of course, this one. So, the existing simple UK frequencies are 449.3. 125, 449.400, and 449.4750. As I said earlier, these are now being added to the license, these four additional frequencies, because these became quite congested. Um, so Ofcom have added these four, but we're just going to leave those aside for today. We'll just concentrate on these, th uh, these three. So 449.3125, 449.400, and 449.4750. So, let's go back to our channel definition, which is in the most toe app. So, we've already got the first one, 449.3125. Now, you'll see in the um, Rx, which means receive side of the uh, channel, we've already got group slash list one selected. But we need to make sure that we do, because... It's just not going to work if this doesn't have a, 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 a receive group list, which you will see. Let's just make that there. So let's, you'll see that matches that there. And then in the transmit side, we've already got the frequency filled in, but we're going to do a channel two to, ex to show how the frequency gets filled in. But the contact name in there is call one which of course corresponds to here. So as you can see, Rx group list, so receive group list, list one, list two, and list three, and uh, contact list, which is the you know the, the, the transmit uh, group ID that it's going to send, as you can see here it's one, two, and three, but on this particular channel being channel one, that is call one. The one other thing that I would suggest that you check and that is admit criteria and I would also always select color code free the reason for that is that if there is ever another radio user pressing the push to talk or trying to speak it means that you won't be able to accidentally speak over them you'll get an error tone which is kind of like a, a long beep it's quite annoying so you, you can't really miss it anyway so the in, uh, in call criteria, uh, sorry, the admit criteria, color code free, in call criteria should also admit, follow the admit criteria. And yeah, always check that your power level is, is set to high. Now, this particular uh, channel doesn't need all this uh, selected because it's a back to back, a simple channel, simple back to back channel. But let's just pop up here. We're going to look at something which is called color code. Just ignore my virtual box notifications here. It thinks I'm trying to drag and drop something to my desktop, so just ignore that. Okay, so the color code here, I've selected as one because I don't really think there's a need to select two, three, four, five, whatever. Just always leave it as one unless you have a need to, uh, perhaps you had two different radio fleets. This would work a lot like CTCSS. Um, if you're interested in what CTCSS is on older radios, just do a little Google search, and the first result is almost always Wikipedia, which is very, very interesting on what CTCSS is and how it works. The new version of CTCSS in the world of DMR is called Color Code. Whilst it's not literally CTCSS, it works in a similar way. How CTCSS works is that if an incoming signal uh, is received by the uh, by the radio, but it doesn't actually match the CTCSS in which the radio is expecting, it will ignore the incoming radio signal. That that's quite interesting because that means that you can have multiple different people on the same channel, and they won't. Uh, cause any any major interference provided they're not stood right next to each other. Okay, so um, We'll leave color code at one for now and the next thing I was going to show you was repeat a time slot uh, Well, we're just going to leave that at one as well 
because we don't need to specifically state the repeater time slot on this particular uh, tutorial or this particular episode because all the purpose of this tutorial is to show you that how to how to program three channels on the DP4400E. So let's get on with the, the next two. So add a digital channel again and that will say channel one again and well, we're going to rename these channels so it doesn't matter what they call so click so you you right click you click add and you click digital channel which is shift and f6 if you want a shortcut so i've got those channels here and instead of clicking into the channels what i'm going to do this time is click on the zone so that would currently say zone one so again what we're going to do is we're going to change that to say channel one. Oh no it already says channel one let's change this one to say channel two and this one to say channel space three and then the voice announcement files I already have them activated, but I'm going to go through that in a, in a future video of how to activate them. If you have the option here, then, you know, you might as well just scroll down until you find uh, channel two, which is there for this one, and channel three, which is uh, there for this one. And then if we scroll along, and we keep scrolling and eventually we'll come to the ah uh, there we go rx frequency as you can see we did that earlier we did the 449.3125 so let's do this one 449.400 or 4000 uh 449.4750 and if we just pop back to our blog you'll see 449.400 4,000 is the same. It doesn't matter how many additional zeros you have there. And 449.4750. Um, yes, these are now live or for most for most licenses that were issued as of 2018, they're live. Any licenses that were issued prior to 2017, you can ask Ofcom to allow you to use them. But following your next license renewal they will be available to you these channels will be available to you so let's get back to programming so here we are we've got those three channels but that's not all because you'll notice that we've only set the rx frequency okay so let's double click on channel two scroll down a little bit let's have a little look yeah and you'll notice that rx frequency is set as we expected and then we need to click copy to change that to change the transmit frequency to be the same the group list is list 2 for this particular channel and it's call 2 we don't need to activate the emergency system on this channel again channel 3 you may remember that from earlier hang on let's let's move that down channel 3 you'll remember that from earlier color code 3 it should be that should be follow a mic criteria and let's just check that our channel is on high power which it is and then finally we'll double click on channel 3 and we will select oops, wrong one we will select list 3 click copy so again we've got the same rx frequency and the same transmit frequency so rx meaning receive and tx meaning transmit and then call th call 3 is again call 3 so transmit and call 3 and list 3 means we are receiving on uh, call 3 or list 3 and then finally, we don't need an emergency system programmed for this particular channel. Channel 3 again, select colour code 3, follow MIC criteria, and ensure that your channel is on high power. Okay, and you'll see that there are none of these selected. Let's just go back to channel 1. For the purpose of this demonstration, tutorial, or episode, whatever you want to call it, um, the emergency system should be none. Okay, good. So, we now have three channels. So, let's recap. Okay, so channel one is on 449.3125, is assigned to receive group uh, list one, which is there, and it's reflected there. It's assigned to the contact group, so the group ID of, or the group call one, which has group ID of one, and that is there. Then channel two. 449.400 and the transmit frequency is the same it has a receive group of list 2 or receive list of list 2 and a digital 
transmit group of call 2, which has ID 2. And you'll see that there, call 2. And then finally, channel 3, 449.4750, with a transmit frequency of the same, because these are back-to-back -back radios. Uh, a receive group of list 3, and a transmit contact list of call 3, which is ID 3. And again, they all colour code free, follow admit criteria. Uh, right, so that is absolutely everything that is required to make this radio work with another radio. So now what you can do is delete any passwords in the code plug. <laughs> so we don't need them for the demonstration. I'm just going to flick through and make sure I've not missed anything. And it turns out I haven't, even though VirtualBox thinks I'm dragging and dropping from one computer to another. Um, right, so that's it. We are ready to program. Now, here's something that I've said in earlier videos that is has equal merit, but nevertheless doesn't matter if we have if we have a radio such as this one which is a back-to-back, -back, uh, sorry, not a back-to-back, -back, a, um, a non-display radio that is typically, I say typically because it is possible, and I'll show you how to do it in a future video, it is typically not used for individual call. What we mean by individual call is the ability to have a private conversation with another radio. It is possible. You can do it in many ways, including... Uh, assigning individual um, users to the channel selector and many other ways to do individual call. But today we're assuming that we're just using radios in a conventional fashion. So this radio doesn't have a display, it doesn't have a, a phone book, if you will, or a contact list book. And so therefore, we program it as such back to back. Now, with that in mind, what that means is that we can leave radio ID at number one and we can write this code plug into this radio and clone it into any other radio. And the reason we can do that is because it's not actually trying to make individual calls to itself. What I mean by that is that if we assigned radio ID one, that would be like a telephone number. Now, I don't know how it works these days, but in the early, in the 80s and 90s, if you tried to make a telephone call from a landline to yourself, you would get a busy tone. And that's exactly what would happen if every radio in the fleet had the same radio ID. But since they're back-to-back, -back, and we're using very, very simple and generic programming, as you've seen here, you can leave them all with the same ID. So, let's write this into this radio. Ooh, okay, that didn't work. Let's try that again. Again, I said we might need this again, so let's just wait for it. There we go. So we just plug the radio back in. Right, so we we make sure the radio is switched on, which is what I just did. Then we'll click right, and it will write to the radio that is currently connected, as you can see. There we go. Good. Good. Right, so we've now written this radio and we can now go and channel one. That channel that was the um voice announcement that's built into the Motorola Motor Turbo series radios. I'll do a I'll do a uh, a video on that at a later date of how it is exactly that we make these radios talk. Um, but that's not for today. So today we've covered absolutely the very basics of programming a DP4400E or a DP4400. They're practically the same radio with a few differences. If you do want to see what the difference is between a 4400 and a 4400E, take a look at our website. There's a uh, article on any of the DP4000 series pages that just gives you a little bit of a pointer on to the differences. Recap. Let's go. So... The channels are here in the zone uh, one. So we've got channels, zone one, channel one, channel two, and channel three. As we said, channel one is 
on simple Ofcom's Simple UK channel one, which is four four nine point three one two five. Channel two, which is four four nine point four hundred. Channel three, which is four four nine point four seven five zero. Uh, and then each of these channels, as you can see, channel one is assigned to group uh, RX group list one. Channel two is assigned to RX group list two. Channel three is assigned to RX group list three. And equally, as you will see, contact one for channel one, channel two and channel three, and they're in the digital contacts. So that's pretty much it. That is how you program a DP4400 series or a DP4400E series with three back-to-back -back channels. As ever, we want to hear uh, your views. So if you have any comments, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to thumbs up. If you didn't like it, equally, give us a thumbs down and explain why in the comments. And that's pretty much it for, the, for this particular tutorial. Anything you need, and again, one last plug, absolutely anything you need to wear radio, please see radiotronics.co.uk. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we post a new video or start a live stream.